What a game we just witnessed in Los Angeles. The Dolphins win a thriller over the Chargers, 36-34. I don't know how we came out on top, but we did. And jumping into these stats real quick, Tua Tungavailoa, 28 of 45, 466 yards, three TDs, and one interception. I'm getting flashback of the Ravens game looking at this stat line. Uh, we'll be talking about him in a bit, trust me on that. In the Russian game, Raheem Mostert, 10 carries for 37 yards with a touchdown. I felt like he had more than 37 yards, to be honest. Um, no Devon A. Chain in this game, no Jeff Wilson, so Raheem Mostert did his job. You love to see it. Um, I think that we'll get A-Chain back next week, and Jeff Wilson should be back for the Week 5 game against the Panthers, or I think, or the Giants, one of those two teams. Um, but in the receiving game... <laughs> Tyreek Hill had a pretty good game today. 11 receptions for 215 yards and two touchdowns on 15 targets. Tyreek Hill announced publicly that he was going to get 2,000 yards. The Dolphins wasted no time getting him started on that goal. Um, 215 yards in this in the season opener is crazy. I think it's the third most in a season opening game in NFL history. Tua actually has the fourth most passing yards in the uh, week one game in NFL history, which is pretty crazy. Um, Jalen Waddle was 4 for 78, had a pretty good game. Durham Smythe, 3 for 44. Braxton Berrios, 3 for 42. Going to talk about him in a bit because he had a couple of clutch plays. River Craycraft, 3 for 40. And a touchdown, Alec Ingle, 2 for 34. And then Mostert, 3 for three for 13. Um, and on the Charger side, Justin Herbert. Now, he didn't have a bad game. But compared to Tua, it looks like they, I mean, it looks like Herbert only played a half. Um, while Tua played the full game. 23 for 33, 228 yards and a touchdown. Austin Eckler rushing 16 for 117 and a touchdown. I'm going to talk about that rush defense in a bit, and it's not going to be with a smile on my face. Joshua Kelly, 16 carries for 91 yards and a touchdown. Herbert ran it in for a touchdown with 18 yards on top of that. Um, and in the receiving game, Keenan Allen, six receptions for 76 yards. Austin Eckler, four for 47. Mike Williams, four for 45. Gerald Everett, two for 21. Donald Parham, three for 21 and a touchdown. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about both sides of the ball because, you know, one side played very well while the other side played absolutely terrible. But, I mean, dude, I don't even know where to start in this game. I guess we'll start out with the offense. Um, we'll start with two of it. I mean... Okay, Tua played out of any quarterback in the NFL in Week 1. I know Week 1's not over yet. I think the Cowboys and Giants are playing right now. The Cowboys are winning in a blowout, actually, but Prescott isn't even playing that good. Tua Tungvaloa is the best, played as the best quarterback in Week 1. Like, he had the best performance by far. Joe Burrow played terrible. Mahomes played all right, but he didn't get the win, so, you know, you can't give him that, that FedEx Air Player of the Week. Um, I mean, Brock Purdy played good, but they, you know... At the end of the day, it's it's the Niners system, and you know any quarterback can succeed there. Um, I mean, no other quarterback played good this week. I, I I mean, I was at a restaurant watching every single one o'clock week one game, and nobody looked good. Tua was the best quarterback that looked good this week. Um, Justin Herbert, like I said, he didn't have a bad game, but compared to Tua, I mean, Jesus Christ! And that one interception he threw up, it was um, I think it was Braxton Berrios versus J.C. Jackson. And I'm going to talk about J.C. Jackson, too, in a bit. That was the one good play that he did have today. He had a couple good plays, but that was a really good play that he made. Um, you know, he pushed off a little bit of Berrios, but at the end of the day, Berrios is way smaller. He's like a slot receiver. I don't know why he decided to throw that ball, but I don't think it was a, a specifically a bad throw. So, you know, it's going to be put on the track record, but at the end of the day, I'm not too mad at that throw by Tua. Um, Tyree Kill, I mean, the Chargers just could not stop him, and... This is also another thing I want to throw out there. The Miami Dolphins played this game without two of their three best players. And of course, Jalen Ramsey, Teron Armstead. Teron Armstead is expected to be back next week, which you'd love to see. The O-line I'm going to talk about in a bit. Got a lot to talk about. This video is just going to be literally talking nonsense. And then probably tomorrow night, I'll have like a more detailed video. But I'm just really excited right now. Um, the, the Chargers couldn't stop anything. Or from what I was saying before, the Dolphins beat a fully healthy Chargers team. I know Mike Williams missed like a couple minutes, Austin Eckler missed a couple minutes, but at the end of the day, this team was fully healthy. The Dolphins missed Teron Armstead and Jalen Ramsey today, right? And the Chargers, you know, the Chargers played really well, but the Dolphins did this all without their best offensive lineman, without their best defensive player. It just really surprised me that we were able to win this game with such a quality uh, football game. You know, the, the game on Sunday Night Football Week 14 last year, it was a one-possession game, right? We only lost by six points. 
But just the the uh, the times that we scored the ball, you know, that Tyree Kill fumble recovery, that was just a random play. It was a one-on-one throw up to Tyreek, which was the second one. Those were, you know, those are good plays, but it's just it's just nothing like what we saw today, man. And the uh, two and Tyreek were carving up this Chargers defense all day. Um, the times where J.C. Jackson was man on man with Jalen Waddle on that opening drive, the Waddle slants, he went for 35 yards on J.C. Jackson. Tyree Kill, um, that play, that the first play from the drive, the 35 yard touchdown on the from uh, on the sideline, that was a bomb by Tua, dime by him, um, and he just he just ran past J.C. Jackson, and then on the on another one he went like 20 yards, 15, 20 yards up, and then cut in. Tua dropped it in the bucket, and Tyreek just ran for an extra 15, 20 yards as well. Um, I mean, their timing is just so on point. Now, like last year, week one versus the Patriots, we won that game 20 to 7. But we we I mean, the, the way that we played today was nothing like what we played like last year against the Patriots. I mean, there was like it was a lot of running the ball last week, last year versus the Patriots. It was a lot of short passes. We would see some type of comebacks from Tyreek. We saw in a, a across the field that play before halftime on fourth and seven to Jalen Waddle. But the plays that we saw to Tyree kill today were nothing like what we saw last year. I mean, Tua and Tyreek's timing is so on point this year. The anticipation throws by Tua are more improved this year. And that was one of his best aspects of his game last year. And, I mean, this is just the start of the season, man. I mean, you're, we're getting two of our three best players back. We'll get one of them back next week, like I said, in Toronto Armstead. We'll have more time. Um, and the Jalen Ramsey will come back later, but like I said, I wanted to talk about the offensive line. Credits to them, man. Kendall Lamb started at left tackle. Um, for some reason, Lee Meikenberg came in for like one play, and then they switched out for Isaiah Wynn. Isaiah Wynn played good. Connor Williams, I'll get back to him in a bit. Robert Hunt and uh, Austin Jackson played well on the right side of the on the line. But Connor Williams, man, the very first play of the game was a muff snap. Now, I don't really know whose fault that was on the first play of the game, um, but that's not what you want to see. One of my keys in this game was no mistakes. And, you know, the time management was really good. I don't think we had a single delay of game penalty in this game. We had some other penalties with, you know, <clears throat> Xavier Howard, who I'm going to talk about in a bit. But the time management was good. Um, there was only two bad snaps. That first play of the game, which we got lucky because it was an offsides on defense. It was on Joey Bosa. But then later in that drive... Three great plays, uh, ends around with Eric Izukama, a slant with Jalen Waddle, uh, some other play with Tyreek, um, all was messed up, and it wasn't actually Connor Williams' fault, it was to his fault that ended that first drive, so, you know, Connor Williams, it it's not, wasn't his fault, but it did look like his fault, so he's going to be getting a lot of hate for that, but that was actually to his fault, but, you know, of course, we can't blame Tua for anything with the game that he just had after that play, so, um, you know, shout out Connor Williams and that whole offensive line. Didn't allow a single sack today, which you love to see, especially with an injury-prone quarterback like Tua. Um, so at the end of the day, adding uh, Teron Armstead to this offensive line next week versus the Patriots, we should be expecting a lot of big things. And also Sunday Night Football next week. I'm really excited for that. I think the Patriots just lost in actually a pretty close game against the Eagles. Um, but I really hope that we give Mac Jones hell and that we get our first interception of the season because I'm looking forward to that. Um, but... I mean, what else do I even want to talk about? I I talked about the offense. Let's go to the defense. Now, I said in the in the recap last night, I was sitting in this exact seat around 24 hours ago. I said that I feel more comfortable in the defense than the offense. Now, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I think I was still caught up with the fact that, you know, we haven't seen two on the field since Christmas Day 2022, 2023, actually. No, 2022. Um... And I'm just kind of used to Skylar Thompson and Teddy Bridgewater being the quarterbacks, but I forgot what this offense looked like with Tua. And I'm so happy that I finally remember, man. Um, now the offense looks so good. The defense looked trash, though. So back to that. Um, Vic Fangio, I was a huge fan of when we hired him. The second we fired Josh Boyer, I made a video that very night, and I said I want to hire Vic Fangio, and we did. We ended up we ended up hiring Vic Fangio. It took a while because like he was part of the Eagles staff and they were in the Super Bowl, so. It took a while for everything to be official, but at the end of the day, we got our guy, and you know, we we got, like I said, I talked about last night, we got the Chargers defensive coordinator to come and be an assistant defensive coach just so that he can be with Vic Fangio, and I was excited to see the type of stuff that he would come up with, and you know, we didn't blitz, I, I take that back, I said that we didn't blitz once, but that's not true, we blitzed a couple times actually, and it did pay off actually, the times that we did blitz, we would get to Herbert, and, and it would either be a pressure or 
or it would be a sack. And we didn't. We only finished with three sacks. One was a very clutch sack by Cater Kohu, who put them at the one. And then um, they ended up punting it, and we started the ball at their, thir- at their at their 35 yard line. And that very first play was a two with the Tyreek deep ball touchdown. So Cater Kohu basically got us back in this game. Um, but and uh, other than that sack, we came up with two sacks on the very final drive, which was basically Chubb and Wilkins and uh, Phillips and all that all those guys on the line. Um, and I think I'm going to recap that fourth quarter in a bit, but, um, what was I talking about before the defense, the defense did not play good. Now that, that very first drive, the chargers have been uh, prepping for that first drive against the dolphins all off season long. So I wasn't, you know, I was pissed off obviously, cause we just turned the ball over and they came down and scored on a 95 yard drive. But at the end of the day, the chargers offense played well and our defense just, it just couldn't stop the run. That's it. The run defense was atrocious. Christian Wilkins wants to get paid. Not after that performance. Now, Wilkins had his plays, and he was getting doubled, of course, but you have Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips on each side of the defensive line. You have Raekwon Davis and Zach Sealer in there at some points. Why was the Chargers offensive line creating holes the size of from one hash mark to the other? I mean, it was crazy. Now, Austin Eckler is a crazy, talented player. He can catch like a receiver, run like a running back. But at the same time, Joshua Kelly was running through our entire team. I mean, it was crazy, man. The linebackers were playing way too far back. And, you know, at times they would just be waiting for Eckler or Joshua Kelly to come to them instead of getting on, pouncing onto it. I mean, they would wait. It would be a little comeback route. Um... And Jerome Baker would wait till Austin Eckler caught the ball and then turned around and had the chance to make a move on him. And of course, he ended up doing that because Jerome Baker can't tackle. Um, he can. I take that back. I I, I love Jerome Baker. Um, David Long, you know, the plays we saw in preseason and training camp, I was expecting a lot more out of him. I didn't hear his name called that much today. I don't even know how many tackles he had. I don't even want to check at this point. Um... But just know that the only way, the only reason we won this game is because the offense absolutely carried the defense. And um, I mean, I wrote some things down. Yeah, like the oh, also with the defense, Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips didn't do shit. Like they were really nowhere to be seen until the very end of the game. You know, they got those two sacks, so it, you know it, it it made up for it. But Phillips and Chubb were nowhere. I mean, you know, I I talked about Wilkins and stuff, but nobody on the defense was anywhere to be seen. Xavier Howard. That's who I just remembered I absolutely hated today. Three penalties on him alone. All in one drive. Or it may have been two in only one drive. It may have been three. But he had three in like at least one quarter today. And it was back-to-back pass interference calls and then also an illegal contact call. And if we lost this game, I would have been yelling at Xavier Howard. And although I already am, I would have actually been furious. But I can at least smile it off because I know that we ended up winning the game. And we are 1-0. and First in the AFC East, at least until tomorrow. Because, you know, whoever wins tomorrow is technically going to jump us because of the divisional record. I'm, I am excited for that game. But um, Xavier Howard's got to pick it up. I mean, especially knowing that Jalen Ramsey's not going to be back till late November, early December. Xavier Howard has got to step it up. Cater Coe, who had a good game. Eli Apple had a good game. We'll be getting Nick Needham back soon. Elijah Campbell plays soon. Justin Bethel played pretty well. He played a lot considering he was questionable for the game and also that he's a special teams player. He actually came up with the sack. He was like probably got half a sack credit for that final sack on 4th and 12 um, on Justin Herbin. And I don't know if anyone else saw that if they live in the Miami area, but my screen went blue when it was... when um. Our players were collapsing the pocket on Herbert on that last fourth down play, which really pissed me off because I didn't even know what was going on for a quick second. But, I mean, I really don't know what else to talk about. Like I said, I'll probably have a more detailed video tomorrow where I'm not just saying the most random stuff. Um, oh, I'll quickly talk about Mike McDaniel and this offense. He said this offseason that he would be running the ball more, you know, on third and one, third and two, even third and three sometimes he would be running the ball more. Why the hell is it first and goal from our three-yard line and we're passing the ball three times in a row? I mean, really? Now, okay, look, it was it was late in that game. We were down by four and there was, what, a minute and a half left or so, two minutes left. We were at our three or five-yard line. 
why are we passing the ball? It was two straight incomplete passes, and it only took around a total of five, six seconds off the clock. It, it, we're leaving the Chargers with a lot of time. We should be running the ball, getting a yard or two at most, right? Because the Chargers are going to be expecting the run, or at least they should have been. Um, and, you know, then we let the time tick. If the Chargers want to call their timeouts, then great. When they get the ball back, they'll have no more time or, or no timeouts to use. But we passed the ball, and on that third and goal play where Tua threw it up to Tyreek, I'm thinking, what the hell are we doing? Tyreek Hill is not going to go up and make that catch in a one-on-one, -on -one, and then he did. I literally didn't even see the ball because it went right past the defender's helmet. I don't even know who was guarding him, but I see the defender move out of the way, and Tyreek Hill has the ball in his hands. And how the hell did that happen? I don't know. Tua is a magician. The, the play where he made, uh, it was 3rd and 12, or I think it was 3rd and 10 actually, he steps up in the pocket on the run, makes that throw with the left hand, lets it fly in stride to Tyreek. That was the best throw of his career. I think it had to have been, but I'm, I'm done literally just talking about nothing. The Dolphins win this game in a thriller. 38-36 uh, or 36-34 was the final score. 36-34. Um, week two versus the Patriots, of course, coming up next, but, you know, we're not going to get into that yet. We'll have the preview for that, obviously, on Saturday, but let's focus on the win for a bit, and then we get back to work tomorrow and stuff. What a game, man. We got our revenge. I don't even know what else to say. I'll probably have another video, like I said, coming up tomorrow, but either way, that'll wrap up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day. Peace.